Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. In this afternoon's Celtic edition of the Celtic FC News by the One Celtic Fans View, we're going to talk about the transfers that have happened so far this season and what we think might happen in the transfers as the window goes on and closes at the end of this month. Yes, we are finally into August and the football season is just around the corner. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up as it does help with the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure that you do so that you can have a chat with us throughout the game this evening as we're going to do a little live, just a test, just to see how it goes out. And uh, we can all sit and talk together about the game for those that aren't going to the game. So Celtic have been kind of busy during this transfer window. Uh, Brendan Rodgers has brought in a number of players. To be fair, a number of those players were already earmarked for transfers before Brendan came in. We've spent around about £12 million so far on Rocky, Odin, uh, Yang, Marco, uh, Kiwon, uh, Tomioki, Iwata has also made his move to Celtic full-time. With that being said... Only 12 million spent. We brought in 25 million pounds for Jota. We had a war chest of 30 million at the start of the transfer window, according to reports. And we haven't really spent any of that money so far. There has been one person that we've all been speaking about, and we've all been speaking about a keeper, and that's Donna Mikhlaikovic. And Frank McIverney's also been talking about him. Frank McIverney says it would be a fantastic player to get in. Tell me your thoughts on the the comments about it and what you think of the transfer window so far. We have brought these players in and we've also spoke about the fact on this channel that remember some players that were brought in in the past weren't big signings and ones that we can think about is definitely Jota. We brought him in on loan and the same with Carter Vickers. We brought Cameron Carter Vickers in on loan because nobody else wanted them really and uh, these players went out to be first team stars. So will the players that have came in so far be first team stars or do you still think that we need to go out and spend? Brendan has already said that the model of the club isn't to go out and spend 10 to 15 million on one player. So where does that leave us at Celtic? Does that leave us the fact that we're not going to spend the 30 million that was rumoured? Um, is this maybe one of the reasons that the, the previous manager left because he wasn't getting to spend 10 to 15 million on a player? This is one of the things that we don't know. Anyway, Frank McAvenny has been talking about Dominic and he said it would be wonderful. It would be absolutely wonderful. It would be great for Rodgers if this deal was able to get over the line. Celtic are definitely needing a goalkeeper. That's something we don't think of. Um, and he said that, talking about Dominic going to Turkey, he says, I think there'd be a better club and stature. And, and like that Celtic maybe don't have the nice weather that Fenerbahce has, but definitely they have the fan base around the world. It would be wonderful for the football club, says Frank McAvenny. I don't think that Scott Bain or Benji Segrist can challenge Joe Hart. From what I've seen pre-season, Frank McAvenny went on to say, he says, there's been a lot of mistakes from the keeper. He says, Brendan is a perfectionist. Uh, he will want to rid those mistakes at the back. And if you can get Lajkovic, that would be great. I think we've all said that if we can get this keeper through the door, that would be our Christmas wish come true. He is valued at around about the 12 million mark. And uh, he's made uh, 286 appearances for Zagreb. He's 28 year old. He is the club captain, but he is in the final 12 months of his contract, showing that there could be potentially a deal to be done. That's always that's all the way that Celtic go. They tend to try and get players that are in the last sort of year of his contract. He is only on fifteen thousand pounds a week, um, and Celtic could certainly offer him more. If you got to remember that Joe Hart came to Celtic for fifteen thousand pound a week, he was he took a massive pay cut to come to Celtic. But let's be fair, Joe Hart made his money over the years down south in England, um, Croatia against the final. Uh, in France back in 2018, he was fantastic then. Uh, he knows what it's like to be at a club that's used to winning trophies. You know, he has picked up, I think it's eight manager honours with Zagreb. And he could be seen as a long-term replacement for Hart. We've all spoke about the fact that we need... Joe Hart is a fantastic keeper, but he does have those little things. And if you remember the last game, the first 30 seconds of the game at the weekend, he kicks the ball out for a corner totally miss kicks the ball rather than hits it out to the player on the wide he kicks it out for a corner uh, should it be a transfer that we should keep an eye on yes you have to remember this transfer was a done deal according to our pundit on twitter 
and an Italian guy, and he said it was a done deal, but it isn't a done deal. Celtic are still seemingly in with a shout. It would be a, it would be a great, great, great signing if we got him in the door. Everyone's everyone's saying it. Um, I've, I've, you know, people come in the videos and say all the time, we need a keeper, we need a centre back, and we need a left back. Um, but we haven't spent the money. When it comes down to it, when you look at it, we have only spent twelve million pounds this summer. Do the club need to get the finger out? Will you be disappointed if we do not dip into the transfer market further? Brendan Rodgers is expecting to dip into the transfer market, but um, it won't be at the prices that we've been thinking about. So it's 10 to 15 million pound players. He's come out and said. With that being said, there is money in the bank. Celtic need a top class goalkeeper. Tell me in the comments what you think it is. Make sure if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe for tonight's live, the James Forrest testimonial. We did talk about the James Forrest testimonial this morning against Club Atletico and Athletic. And I think that's going to be a fantastic game. It's looking like, like there's going to be a fantastic turnout for those of us around the world that can't get to the game. And yes, my Facebook has lit up already with people flying over from Dublin and the buses leaving from Belfast and people getting ready to get buses to the game for the first one of the season. So a big, uh, big jealous one here that uh, you are all going to the game and I'm not. But the upside is I do have this channel which helps us fans, Celtic fans all around the world to enjoy the games. So we are going to be doing a live this evening. It is going to be a world first for the channel. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to go because let's face it, I'm not a football commentator. Um, I'm not sure. Usually these things that people sort of said commentate about the game um, but we'll just see how the comment section goes and basically it's to make sure that we can watch the game if you're watching it in your house or uh, wherever you're watching it a bit of work and then you can have the comment section on and we can all have a bit of a banter and then when it gets to half time we'll have a good half time chat about the game and see what we think there is going to be two different teams going out Brendan has suggested he's going to give as many players as possible game time to try and get them that game time before the first game of the season that is we this weekend. And we did talk about on the live this morning the fact that uh, I think it's Nicky Walsh is the referee for the weekend and it's a bit of a um, Mason Fest. Uh, as we would expect when it comes to the officials. But never mind, there's nothing ever going to change in Scottish football. So we, we just forget about that. Forget about it and we think about how we're going to go into this season, how we're going to win the first game, how we're going to be scoring a lot of goals. And I think that's one thing that we're all looking forward to. Tonight's game is just a testimonial. It will just be a kick around. There's lots of players that Brendan will get on the pitch. Do not look into this game too much. That's what I'll say. But what you should do is make sure you subscribe and join us this evening. So on that note, have a fantastic day. And if you're ready to go to the game or if you're watching this on the bus on the way to the game this evening, have a fantastic time. And yes, I am completely jealous that I'm not going to be there. But on the other hand, life is good. So on that note, have a great day, Celtic fans all around the world.